guess who's back? Never dreamed I'd walk back in this building in 10 days. I'm back. I'm alive. I'm doing well. I've got stitches and bandages and I'm good. I am good and I'm so thankful and I'm so excited to be back. I'm so excited because today is going to be a day full of memories and full of laughter. And y'all, if, if you think God doesn't work in mysterious ways, we had a whole lot of craziness going on last week. But I came out of surgery, six hours and ten minutes of surgery, with two amazing female surgeons. One was only 29 years old. I think I chose the best team I could have ever gotten. Most of the surgeons said, no, we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do this. They got in there and they dooed it all. <laughs> they dooed it all at one time. So I'm so excited to be back. It feels good. I didn't realize how much I love these chairs till I sat back down in them this morning. So yes, it feels good. We have a lot of prayer requests today. COVID is back and you will notice I don't have a guest co-host today. I don't have anybody here with me. I'm not bringing anybody in for a little bit because COVID is running rampant. I have over 10 friends who have it right now. I have not been around any of them, but that doesn't matter. It is going crazy. And I'm thinking, you know, the first time it hit, they blamed it on funerals and church. Well, if I'm going to get COVID, church is a good place to get it. And that's all I'm going to say. So um, a lot of folks are having revivals and a lot of folks have COVID now. So that's okay. If you were there that day that young man was saved at 50 years old and he'd never even been to church, then it's okay if you get COVID. It's all right. We're going to all be good. But prayer request. My sister went under, under the knife on Friday. Long, long surgery. The tumor was much larger than they thought. She is still in the hospital in Orlando, so please, please, please pray for her. And Selena is back at the, um, I think she's having a CT scan today. I believe it's at one o'clock, so please say a prayer for her and pray that things go well. She had a rough, rough few days last week. Really, really rough. I hate cancer. I'll just say it, I hate it. My sister had no symptoms and then she started losing a tiny bit of blood and then a little bit more blood and then at the end it was really, really bad. So say a prayer that they got it all, they're going to wipe it out and we're going to move right on and tell cancer you have been defeated. Yes, you have. And say prayers for Danny Hensley. Please say some prayers for Danny Hensley. There are so many people battling cancer. I hate cancer. Hans Rufert says it the other way, but I'm not going to do that. But I think it all the time. It is a rough, rough stuff. And we know so many people who are battling it. And we do know people who have won that battle. Hans Rufert is one of those. And so we want to um, a shout out to everybody who won that battle with cancer. But at the same time, please say a prayer for those who didn't. And um, to Cindy Dale, I love you and I hope that um, your sweet Jen is comfortable and everything's going to be um, in God's hands. That's, that's what we do. That's what we do. I will tell y'all, when I left here, the de last day that Jen and I were here, I really didn't know if I was going to be back or not. And so that night at 3 a.m. I'm making plans and I'm writing all these things down because at my age, I'm old and I'm thinking I'm going to surgery. We don't know if I'm going to come out of this surgery. We don't know how things are going to go. So you write down all the things you want done. And I told just a few people of the things and how I wanted anything handled just in case I didn't wake up. Well, I woke up, but I didn't wake up very well. And they were getting kind of nervous because I was in recovery for a couple of hours. They couldn't get me awake. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, no wonder I was having weird feelings about it. I just, I guess because I've been put to sleep so many times this year, I don't do well with anesthesia. I don't do well coming out of it. So I was hearing everything going on around me but I couldn't do anything about it and I couldn't wake up and I was trying really, really hard. And it reminded me of the ride in the ambulance seven and a half years ago, be eight years in November when I was gone and I kept making a deal with God. You don't make deals with God, but I kept saying, Lord, I've lived the worst of my life. Please let me live the best of my life. Well, if I'd have known then what I know now, I don't know if I'd have begged for that deal. 
but I kept saying, let me come back, let me come back. Well, after nine minutes, the ambulance driver was like ecstatic because I came back because he was, he was working hard to get me back. We don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. We think we're going into a simple surgery. Larry Davis is a perfect example, one of our great founding fathers here at ETC. He was on the music line when they were bringing the music in to begin with. And he had surgery and he didn't make it out of there, you know. And um, John Trammell, wonderful, loved man down in, in Jasper that everybody loved. John Trammell went in for surgery and didn't make it out. So you see these negative things and sometimes you put it in your head and you think, am I gonna come out of this? I came out of it. I came out of it. I think I'm feeling for 10 days, I think I feel exactly as I should. I'm uncomfortable. And I said, I don't wanna bring any guests in here right now because I'm probably gonna be a little bit grumpy and a little bit hard to deal with because I do still hurt, but I wanted to be here today. I wanted to be with y'all. I wanted to tell you thank you for the food, for the cards, for the calls, for the text, for the love and hugs that I felt coming my way and the prayers because I, I know that y'all were praying for me. And so far, everybody that I had asked to do something just in case and if and when and da 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 came through except one and they're still working on it, but they're working hard on it. So, so it is one of those things that uh, I just, I don't know how I felt really strange going into this surgery because I knew it was gonna be long and I guess it just made me nervous, but coming out of it, I've done remarkable. And uh, I told my surgeon, I said, y'all are the best. I thank God every day that I waited for y'all. I thank God that you were there to do what you did and to have a team of only female surgeons. Um, it, was, it was absolutely amazing. It was absolutely amazing to look at these young women who took me and basically sliced, diced, chopped, smothered, covered, and fixed. And that's really, really cool. So I'm thankful, I'm thankful. Also, I got a call last week, and um, the call was instigated by a friend of mine, Ricky Fields, and I want to share some of his music, because I remember the day I walked into Antioch Baptist Church, and I heard Ricky Fields sing a song, and it's always been in my head, and I think it reminds me a lot of my late husband. I think it reminds me a lot of a lot of people who do turn their life around. Before I met my husband, he drank. But I never saw him drunk. I never saw him doing any of those crazy things. Um, and so he decided he was gonna quit drinking before the kids were old enough to know that he was drinking. So he quit. And all the years we were married, lots of years we were married, a gallon of white lightning from here in Gilmer County sat at the foot of our bed. And every time I would hit my foot on that as I was making up the bed, I'd say, why can't we move this? And he said, because. I want it to stay right there. He said, I want to prove a point to myself that after all those years of drinking, I quit. And I said, okay, can we sit it somewhere else? So he finally let me sit it up in the corner by the head of the bed. Sat there for years and years and years. And everybody who knew my husband didn't believe he quit drinking. He just cold turkey, quit drinking, that was it, over with it, done. And again, because I wasn't married to him when he drank, I didn't know what he was like drinking. I didn't know his personality when he was drinking. I just knew that we'd been the best of friends for eight years and then we ended up happily married for many, many, many years. So, but I didn't know how alcohol affected him. I just, he quit drinking. So when I heard this song by Ricky, I thought, wow, there are so many people who really do put it away, lay it down, quit, turn their lives around. It's revival time. So I said, this is the best time in the world to share this song because it says the old man is dead. And when you go to revival and you are saved and you are doused in that water and you give your heart to the Lord, it's all good from that day forward. And so I want you to sit back today and we're gonna share this song that Ricky did. And um, then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna share something so precious to me I went to my, I have this huge chest and it's just full of DVDs of programs and programs and programs. And I said, I need something that's gonna make me smile today. I need something that's gonna keep me on my toes because I need to feel good and positive today. And this one has my daughter, Angela, on it. And she's laughing and she's cutting up and Charlene's on it. And more than that, Juanita Wilkie is on it and so is Jerry Forrester. 
and it just blessed my heart. The three people on the to the left of me, to the right of me, left of me, that you'll see on the program, have all gone on to glory. Did we grieve them? Absolutely. Did we cry and miss them every single day? Absolutely. But you know what it's like when you leave here and you go to glory? It's a pretty nice trip. We're also going to get to hear Kenny and Kim O'Neill and their children as they sing Glory Road. Today is going to be a good, good day. We're going to end with some music by Mr. Ella J. And he's not here today because he's been really busy. I'm a canning crazy woman. I love to can blackberries. And he's been picking blackberries. And I've been canning blackberries. But more than that, he's been writing a new song. And he's very into that right now. He was commissioned on Friday. He started it Saturday. He finished it Saturday, but then he decides he wants to tweak it a little bit. It's a really, really cool song, and you'll get to hear it in the near future. There's something in each of us that we can give back, and I think that's what the Lord commands us to do, to give what you have to give. And I have to say to my friends who brought food, we had some great vegetables. Oh my gosh, we had wonderful vegetables. To Vicki, who got up at early, early 30 to take me to the hospital. To Dawn and Uncle John and Ansley, who sat there with her for hours and hours and hours, waiting and waiting for me to come out of surgery. And to my caregiver at home, um, I have had a really good, I guess I could call him a nurse, but um, Mr. Brackett has done a good job of taking care of making sure that I had what I needed. And uh, it's been a really good trip to get back to normal. I'm feeling not completely healed, but I'm feeling really, really good about the future. And I don't think there's anything left in me, I hope, knock on wood, that they need to do again, because I think I've been fixed, I hope. I hope every problem that was there is fixed. I have a checkup in about a week. And I hope that we get nothing but good news. But while we're here on this earth, it is we are commanded to do for others. And I found, this is crazy, y'all. But Dawn, you know, everybody knows the story. Dawn buys me these little books, and she says, Mama, you need to live by these. Okay, July the 25th, it says, Lord, help me to live my life with a sense of purpose and understanding of the calling, of the calling you have given me. I lay down all pride, selfishness, and anything else that would keep me from moving into all you have for me. Now, if you think that the Lord's not in charge, I look around. I look at the sunsets on Fort Mountain. I look at the beautiful waterfalls. I look at the amazing people who are talented enough to write great songs. I was listening all the way up here today to our Earl Thomas Conley, Smoky Mountain Memories. And I thought about the end of his life was still as God planned it. He was one of the greatest songwriters in country music ever. He, he had like 23 number one hits. He wrote for everybody. He was amazing, but his life was in God's plan. And at the end, he had dementia and he had Alzheimer's and he died way, way, way too soon. But I was fortunate enough to interview him and to really fall in love with him because he was just a good guy. He sat there with a high temperature with the flu and did this hour long interview. So he was one of God's children who was blessed with the talent to write songs. He was great performing. He did everything and it was a gift from God. You don't just wake up one day and can do this stuff. You either get it or you don't. I didn't get any of it. But I do love good music. And so today, we're going to share some music. We're going to share Glory Road and uh, one more song from Kenny and Kim O'Neill. We're going to share a little bit. And you local folks will love that um, Eric McVeigh is going to be on this program. He's an Ella J. born and bred boy. Boy. And he's a big, tall boy. And uh, we're going to share that. But it's going to be a fun, fun day of just looking back and sharing some things with you. We're also going to share a poem that Don's grandfather wrote. It's on the history of the Cherokee, and it's about Chief Sawney. And we are celebrating right now, it's the 60th or the 61st anniversary of the Chief Van House. If you have not been there, I challenge you today, first of all, get in your car and go take the back roads to Chatsworth. Take the back roads to Chatsworth and see things that you've never seen end up over on 225 and go to the Chief Van House. It is part of the Georgia Parks Association. 
and it is a wonderful place to visit. And we're going to share a little bit of visit we did with Jeff Stancil, and we're going to also share a lady reading the poem that Forrest Wade wrote. And it's it's a wonderful poem. So I want you to sit back today, get your second cup of coffee, spend the day with me, and know without a doubt how much I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate the amazing food that y'all brought to the house. I also have another prayer request. One of my besties, the Queen Belle of Ball Ground, Jenny Byers, is battling COVID. So please say a prayer for sweet Jenny. I'm not sure if David has it, but again, we go to revival, we hug, we see people, and COVID is running crazy again. So please be cautious, please be careful if you're out there, but please also add all these people to your prayer list. We're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to share some music with my dear friend, Ricky Fields, and true, the old man is dead. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat we've got you covered hot and fresh food every day every time and delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place not fast food fan food fast your Blue Ridge Ella J and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat eat and treat headquarters thank you for choosing DQ how may I serve you United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. High speed Wi Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Such a wicked 
wicked life. I had no hope inside. I was lost in darkness, searching for the light. But then one night in a little church, after hearing what a preacher said, Gave my life to Jesus. Now the old man is dead. And the man you see before you may look a lot the same. I still wear the same clothes. Still got the same old he has to share he goes out all over the midwest and builds churches and places that do not have churches so ricky fields thank you so much for doing what you do to make the world a better place okay we're going to go now to something that is very precious to my heart and uh, it was very weird when i went to the chest that has all these dvds in it i picked one out and i wanted it to be close to the date that we are today so i was trying to get in the summer months and when I looked at it, it didn't have any writing on it to tell me what I was about to see. I put it in, and it's my beautiful daughter laughing. And I said, I have to share this. So this is Charlene, Angela, and me, the Joy Masters, um, Jerry Forrester, and Juanita Wilkie. It was just a good day of laughter, fellowship, and fun. And so we're going to go to that and spend a little time there just talking and laughing. And then we're going to come in and do the poem that Don's grandfather wrote. And this poem, it, it is amazing to me. Forrest Wade was not uh, an educated man. He just, he, he wandered the hills and the, and the mountains for years and years and years doing Indian history. And that was his thing. And then he wrote the book, Cry of the Eagle. So we're gonna share the poem with you. You're gonna get to see some of my favorite footage because I went to the Chief Van House Chad Crow actually worked here and we nicknamed him Click It because he always had a camera in his hand. But we went to the Chief Van house, and I just asked this lady if she would sit down with her children and read this poem for me. And I handed her the book, and she did that. And it's just amazing. So I want you to sit back. I hope you have a DVR, and you can record this. So here we go to a visit. This is about 11 years ago, I believe. And we have a group who started singing together when I was a mere child. I love that. I love that somebody is older than me. Now, Jerry, welcome, welcome, welcome. You have been involved with the Joy Masters for how many years? 40 years. Well, I was 17. Maybe I wasn't a child. <laughs> you were but a teenager. I was, I was a teenager. Yeah, that qualifies as a child. Now, tell me what's going on with the Joy Masters right now. Well, we're still traveling a lot, and we're going to have our 40th anniversary. And uh, the old group hadn't sung in 32 years. Wow. And we're going to come back to the microphone and mm -hmm. sing again in August, oh, now August the 16th. I had a hairdo like that one time. Kevin, I had a hairdo like that one time. The bouffant. <coughs> Yay. The bouffant with the yeah, hairspray. I told my wife she's going to have to get her hair done like that. That is funny. Oh, that is funny. Now tell me who the people in the group are. I, I recognize you. Well, my wife Bobby is standing in front of me, then the behind is Bob Bailey, uh -huh. and his wife in front of Ardell Bailey. Okay. Now, of the original group, who's going to be in there? I love these All y'all. That's right there. All That's it. Gonna right, be there. Yeah. Okay. So you've been lucky enough that everybody's good and healthy. Look at my mama. How funny. <laughs> and my daddy. Oh, oh my goodness, a hairpiece. Talk about a bouffant. 
And look at your daddy. Lord, we had a clock like that. <laughs> <laughs> I and know. They, is look this in that. the 60s, Juanita? Yes, it is. And I want me it's in the 70s. 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 That clock wow. looks like it's from the 70s. 70s. Wow. Yeah, that is cool. Now, where is this? Isn't it Sunnyside Church of God? Yeah, Sunnyside Church of God in Canton. Out on one, off 140. Mm -hmm. Go out 140 to... Uh, East Cherokee, uh, take the ride on Easy East to find it up on yeah. top of the hill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, how many people will that seat? We can seat about 700. Uh, I think it'll be full. Oh my gosh. I think people are looking forward to it. Get a lot of excitement. Now you've got some new music coming out, and Eric, you're, you're involved in the new music, aren't you? I am. I am. This is actually my third CD. What with, part with do you group. sing? I uh, help out on bass and carry the heavy stuff from the bus back and forth to the <laughs> church. That's, that's really why I'm here. That sounds like Matt uh, and Melton on the Inspirations. So. They say when they're on the bus, the reason the two young ones are there <laughs> is to give the old ones their medicine, tuck them into bed, that's and it. load the bus. That's, so. the, that's the old music in the 70s. Okay. He's a, now, for a lot of the kids in the studio, they have they probably, don't know what never, that is. Seen, they've probably <laughs> never seen an, an LP, that's long it. playing album. Or one of these. This is what they had when I was a child. You don't see them there anymore yeah. like that. Wow. What yeah. years were these? <gasps> That's an eight track. Yeah, what we did cool. this year, we took. <laughs> Angela thought it was eight. one since I was little. That's you did when track. you were born, I had I one. Eight track. <laughs> Look, guys, eight track, a real eight track. I can still play it. I have the old. You're kidding. Player. No. I've played it all these years. Sherry, wow. we took all eight of our albums and put them on CD, so we got. Uh, no, Ninety something songs on four CDs. Wow! Now tell me about ticket sales. How do people get a ticket to this? We, it's love offer. Love offer. Wonderful. That's a good idea. That's what a, we do with the inspiration. We're gonna do a live video and all that now. Oh, that is good. We got these to give away. Oh, good. And we are gonna give something away. Okay, the Joy Masters 40th anniversary singing August 16th, 2008, 6 p.m. Go early and stop somewhere and eat you some good barbecue. Yeah. Are we barbecue addicts? If, yeah, if maybe. We ain't eating. <laughs> we ain't <laughs> eating. <laughs> Sunnyside Church of God, 2510 East Cherokee Drive. And guys, it is easy to find. It is just hang, uh, go off 515, hang a 140, go down toward Roswell. East, East Cherokee. Cherokee, you're right there. We actually sounded pretty good right then. We could be a little groovy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, have you heard your mother sing? No, no, that ain't happening. Nobody <laughs> wants to hear me sing. <laughs> we will be cooking. But we, we compliment wanna... each other, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> we ain't singing. <laughs> now, Jerry, you're excited about this, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, sure, sure. And how long have y'all been planning this? Uh, about a year and a half. And what do you expect? A lot of people who used to hear you or new people, what do you think? Yeah, we've uh, gotten in contact with a lot, a lot of people that used to follow us and mm -hmm. some are old now, but mm -hmm. they're going to try to be there. We've got a lot of people excited, going to bring bus loads and this and that and other with it. That is Don't wonderful. We rode that bus five years with us. What year was this bus, Jerry? That was a 63 Silver Eagle. Wow, That's 63. This is what yeah, look at their now. new bus. That's when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Now, we were talking about diesel fuel earlier. The groups have to buy diesel for these trucks, so it's costing you a lot more to travel, isn't it? Yes, it sure does. Now, do y'all still do mostly love offerings? We ain't never charge the church. See, when we do that, Bill Senior and I talked about when we started promoting gospel music. I said I don't ever want to have to revert to ticket sales because I want everybody to come. If you don't have a dime to put in the pot, you are welcome to come and That's hear right. that music. Right. And if you have $500, Lord, please come. <laughs> because they charge us, it cost us about $4,800 to bring the inspirations to Jasper. Last year, I bit the bullet and I paid two thirds of that money because we did not raise enough money. But gospel music is a ministry. And I don't want the money to ever matter. You know, and I said, as long as I can work one more job, I need one more job if anybody's looking for it, you know. <laughs> because traveling around is more expensive and it costs you more, but you have to deliver the message. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever written anything? I haven't written anything. I haven't written anything. I've, I've probably sung since I was old enough to breathe. Really? Um, so this is, a, this is a, a dream come true to me to get to sing with this sing group. You something for us, could you? I don't know if I, I I'm anxious to hear the, the okay. next group. I might sing maybe one. at the end of the show we will rook y'all into maybe singing a little something. <laughs> I uh, don't don't forget about the uh, another treat of the night is we've sent cards to all the old Joy Masters yeah, right. that have have been either part of the band or, or part of the vocals of the quartet through the years. So. Uh, when, when we get started, there's going to be like this Gaither style mm -hmm. uh, singing. Uh, um, 
that they'll sing for probably half an hour. Yeah, that'd right. be awesome. So it'll be it'll be it'll, that'll be a treat for for me as well. But uh, we got to hear. Um, they haven't lost much in 32 years. I can promise you. That's so cool. it's it's a it's it's a real it'll be a real. Did you treat. did you write any of the music y'all do? No. no. Okay. <clears throat> and what part does your wife? Does she play the piano? No. no. Do any of y'all play the piano? I do. I do play some, but not uh -huh. not. We not, have to speak uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, I've heard the piano players over here this morning. They are good. Uh, they are good. Yeah. We are yeah. blessed with some great entertainment Amen. today. It's gonna be a good day. Amen. Now, what can if they have questions? Is there a number people can call to ask about this singing? Yeah, they can call my number is seven seven zero three four five five eight eight two. Okay. They can call us. They can call you. Yeah. yeah. What's information's your on number? Seven zero six six nine two three five two five at the right. store. At the mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. Now, right now we're going to take a break and go to Chad Crow, and when we come back, we're going to hang out with y'all a few more minutes, and we're going to let people listen to a little bit of your music, Adam. Can we listen to their music as we go to the uh, to Mr. Chad Crow? Or better known as what? Click it. Click it. Click it. What a sweet, precious, precious memory. Oh my gosh. Angela was smiling. Angela was happy. Juanita was healthy. Jerry was healthy. My goodness gracious. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring for us. But to get to share that with y'all and, and you know, the, the Joy Masters, my goodness, how many small churches, how many big churches, how many events, how many concerts, how many benefits they did. The Joy Masters are still doing what they do, creating the magic of music. And I was thinking about when we were talking uh, in that interview about Sunnyside Baptist Church. That's the first time it, Sunnyside Church of God, not Baptist Church. That's the first time I heard the song, I've Just Started Living. And I don't know why I had never heard that song, but Charlene and I sat in that concert the whole, it was on Sunday afternoon, we sat there, and y'all, everybody knows I wear eye makeup. I wear a lot of eye makeup. My makeup was down my face. <clears throat> I could not stop crying. The song just touched my heart. And I thought, oh my gosh, I really have just started living. So um, to be able to share that message and to see my beautiful daughter I wish she had not given up on life. I wish she had not given in to um, because somebody else told her she was of no value and of no worth. She ended her life. Don't let anybody tell you that. Don't let anybody take your joy. Don't let anybody steal the goodness that you have in yourself. Just please, please, if you have ever thought of suicide, please get help. Please pick up the phone and call somebody call a pastor, call, <coughs> call 911 and talk to a dispatcher and, and a big huge shout out to all the amazing dispatchers in the world because they put up with some pressure and some craziness. But don't let anybody take you down. And um, as I sat here watching my daughter and her laughter and her smiles and she loved being here at ETC. She loved doing events with y'all. She loved spending time with you. She loved going to the community meal up in McKaysville. She loved everything about what we did out in the public. But when she would go home at night, it was a very dark situation. And uh, many of us face that. You know, you face something really, really good out in the public and then you go home and whether you're put down or shouted at or screamed at or cussed or whatever you're putting up with, don't don't let that happen and um, know that you are of value and you are God's creation and just know how, how special you are and what a blessing you are. As I saw people doing for me after the surgery, I just kept thinking how blessed I am. Oh my gosh. You know, I really had a negative attitude before I went into surgery because I was scared. I was absolutely scared to death. And then when I came out and I saw all these great things happening and I realized that my life, every single moment of my life, even the lessons are blessings. And so that's what it's about. And uh, today to be able to share Angela with y'all, wow, wow. Because I see she was healthy, she was happy, she was vibrant, she was loving life. And then somebody stepped into her life who told her she was of no value. Don't ever fall for that crap. Don't ever, don't ever listen to somebody who tells you you are not worthy. Just tell them to shut up and get out of your way and get out of my way, Satan, because that's all it is, is Satan. So 
Now, are we ready to share? Because we're going to share now. This is a poem that Dawn's grandfather wrote. And I love the Chief Van House. I want to encourage you to go there. If you walk in the door and you see the colors that I always choose to decorate with, it's because the Chief Van House taught me that you use the blue for the skies, the green for the meadows, the rust or the oranges for the dirt in Georgia to grow your crops, and then you use the yellow for the sunshine. Because, you know, without those four ingredients, God's blessings don't happen. The fields are full of things that don't work. If they don't have good soil, if they don't have sunlight, if they don't have rain, if they don't have all the things they need. And so the, the Cherokee put together these amazing colors and the Chief Van House uses these colors. And so I've always chosen, I've used these colors for probably 40 years. And I continue to do that, but it is really, really cool to look at how life is today because you choose happiness, you choose healthiness, you choose to be good to somebody or you choose to be very negative. So today let's all choose to be good to somebody. Here we go, we're gonna visit with a beautiful lady and her children as she reads a poem written by Forrest Wade. It commemorates the uh, anniversary of the time the house was open to the public in July, on July the 27th of 1958, the local community had actually rescued the Van House, you might say, and purchased it for $5,000 in 1952, donated it to the state of Georgia. The state opened it to the public in 1958, so the, the program commemorates the uh, anniversary of the opening as a state historic site. The day was celebrated with many different activities, from crafts to living history to poems about the plight of the American Indian. At the foot of Sawney Mountain lived a Cherokee clan until along came the white man who wanted their land. The white man was greedy, he lusted for gold. He lied and he cheated and deceitfully stole. The law of the white man did rule one day that the Indians be gathered and carried away. Then came the removal no powers could sway. Chief Sawney called a council, for his tribe could not stay. His people gathered round him, this old chief so wise. Our nation has fallen by the white man's lies. Go on with the soldiers, the removal be removed with the rest. I am too old and feeble for the long journey west. The red hills were calling and too old to go, all withered and feeble. His footsteps were slow. He asked of his people for one last request. Seal me up in Sawney Mountain forever to rest. Take me on Sawney Mountain far back in a cave. Roll a stone o'er the entrance. That will be my grave. Heads bowed low in sadness, hearts heavy with grief. Far back in Sawney Mountain, they led the old chief. All the wealth he had gathered in the days gone by, they placed in the cavern, then left him to die. Many years have gone by and the legend still told, and the white man still searching for Chief Sawney's gold. On top of Sawney Mountain, where the eagle flew high, far back in a tunnel, Chief Sawney did die. High up on the mountain, far back in a cave, lies a great Indian warrior, so loved by his braves. chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. 
Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Another, my heart 
that song. I love that song. I love that song. I wasn't going to get morbid and depressed, but I love that song. I did play it the night before I went into surgery and I was laughing and I said, if something happens, I want y'all to play that song at my funeral. And they said, we can't do that. And I said, yes, you can. Love that song made famous by Merle Haggard and kept famous by Mr. Ella J, who every time his band plays somewhere, somebody requests that song multiple times they request that song. So we had to share a little bit of the music of then. Now we're going back to the music of way back when, way back when. This is Kenny and Kim O'Neill and their two children as they came here to ETC to visit with us. And um, they did two songs that day and Glory Road happens to be one that Charlene and I chose. We love that song. So I want you to sit back, I want you to start patting your foot and I want you to get ready to hear some these folks are up in the Copper Basin and just wonderful, wonderful ministry of music. And Kenny is a great writer. He's an amazing, um, plays the piano. He's, he's played the piano for a lot of folks. Amazing talent, but amazing, wonderful people. They just celebrated a big anniversary and they are truly a love story. So um, sit back now and you're gonna enjoy a little bit of music by Kenny and Kim O'Neill and their two kids. Sit down, we're going to talk to y'all for a minute. Today is kids' day. There you go. Welcome to live TV. There you go. Y'all pray for us. Along the road to Jericho, 
a man walk one day when thieves set upon him and stole his goods away. They beat him down and left him there to die all alone. It seemed this man and saw him lying there but neither one would take the time to ease his despair just when he thought he'd reached the end the third man passed his way and by his grace he helped him out and helped him that same scattered where I fell and I knew if death should find me here my soul was bound for hell the world passed by and looked on me then turned and left me there they didn't have a remedy to ease my despair Just when I thought I'd reached the end, Jesus passed my way. And by his grace on Calvary's tree, I can testify today that I'm so glad the good Samaritan passed by. Okay, time flies when you're having fun. I loved being able to share what we could share today. That is a great advantage of local television. We just saw uh, Eric move here in LJ. We saw Kenny and Kim up in the Copper Basin. We saw Charlene down in Jasper. It is so cool to be able to share this stuff with y'all. Now I'm gonna share one more song as we go off the air. This is from Mr. Ella J. And let me tell you why his name is Mr. Ella J. He wrote the song about Ella J that got hundreds and thousands of hits on YouTube, but that's what it's all about. He writes, he enjoys playing the guitar. He loves doing all those things, but he's also a workaholic. And uh, we laugh about this. We get a lot of things done. He says we have fun and we get things done. He was saying that a long time before he met me, but we are getting a lot of things done. We have a lot of real estate listed. We have a lot of things going on, and we just enjoy hanging out and having a good time. So do that every single day. Find somebody fun, hang out, have a good time, 
and enjoy life to the, the most every single moment because every single moment must count. I have a prayer request now from Jen's daughter. She said that uh, Michelle says that Jen had a CT scan and I don't know if it came back bad or came back with more cancer or if it's just preventative. But she's back on chemo again this week. So once again, that evil cancer rears its head and you have to fight it. Please continue to pray for my sister, Lila Paget. She is down in Florida battling cancer to Selena, who is going in for a CT scan today, and for Danny Hensley. And we all know what Danny Hensley means to the community of LJ, what he means to us, what he means to the ETC family. So please pray for all of these people. We're gonna end today with another one of Mr. LJ's songs. And um, if you like just putting something in your car that's fun and just you just wanna ride the mountain roads and you wanna do the back roads, pick up one of his CDs. You can call me and I will hook you up with it. So, and to Wayne, my biggest fan of my Blackberry Cobbler, I'm so glad you like that cobbler and yes, I will make another one. So yay, Blackberry season. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. Sit back and enjoy some music. the lights of my hometown This place is all so different now And they've torn the red light down That old wooden bridge I fished from Is replaced with man-made stone The swimming pool and our old school Like you, they both Gone. I've been thinking about the summer of 1969, long ago and far away, when I thought you were mine, for better or worse, thick or thin, so much has changed since then my crazy heart spins round and round when i dream of way back when when the rock and roll would play in that old silver chevrolet and am rock was all we knew back But it's all over now, baby blue Yeah.